Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today I'm going to do a channel with Farrah Fawcett in the afterlife. Now, some of you may remember way back 10 years ago on the day that Michael Jackson died, someone else famous also made her a quiet and a graceful exit. And that was Ms. Barra Fawcett. So she died on the same day that Michael Jackson died. That was so, it seems so long ago, but it also seems like it could have been yesterday. It's like this weird time warp, don't you think? Now, that would have been 2009, in June 2009. And I think it's so poignant to honor her by channeling her today on the anniversary of the day that she chose to transition into the afterlife. Now, Farrah Fawcett, she passed away from cancer. She had cancer, a battle with cancer. And I know that, that part I know. So I'd like to connect with her and give her opportunity to have a platform to speak, to share what it is that she would like to share because it's so, it's such a special thing to offer to you who are fans and who are admirers to be able to connect with her energy vibration as a spirit now. So welcome Ms. Vera Fawcett. She has a lighter voice than I thought she would. I don't remember how she sounded, but she has a lighter voice, a much lighter, lighter voice, a little breathy voice and very beautiful, very beautiful in her hair, very blonde hair, kind of wispy as you'd imagine. Gorgeous smile, very strong jaw and very, very perfect smile. And in the days before Photoshop, she says, before Photoshop was a thing, before the social media frenzy and before people were, she says, filtering themselves, she says, long before that, I had to live, she says. And she's showing me a picture of her in a swimsuit and I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know that much, like I'm not a, a mega fan or follower, but she's showing me a swimsuit, so she must have been in like the swimsuit edition of maybe Sports Illustrated or in a swimsuit, like known for an iconic image of her in a swimsuit in part, so she's showing me that. Um, she's acknowledging being a sex symbol. She's acknowledging, she's saying something about the late 70s, early 80s. She's acknowledging that like 78, 79. Um, She's mentioning, okay, so I know that Ryan O'Neill was with her and at the end of her life, but there's some, I know that, I, I, I know that, I think that, I feel that, I don't know, I haven't heard anything about you, Farah, and I haven't heard anything about your life. I know someone had said, I think, um, one of the comments on my YouTube channel was about, uh, your death and that there was a recent documentary or something and and I don't know that because I haven't I haven't watched that so I don't I don't have factual information the only information I'm getting you guys who are viewers here at Above Life Channel is just from my communication connection with her okay that's what it is all right so but I'm feeling like there's some uncertainty about the energy of you and Ryan together and she says, we were on again, off again, or not on again, off again, but like close and then not close, close and then not close. It looks like they actually may have broken up and gotten back together is what it looks like. But she says, it's something like, she says, he was my best friend. And you go through so much with someone. And she says, you deal with addiction, you battle with addiction. And I don't know if she, she's showing me pills or medication. I don't know if she was actually, she's if she struggled with addiction, but I see, um, yeah, she's showing me taking pills, medication, but I don't know if it's abusive. I feel like it's to help numb pain, but I don't think it's connected to her cancer, you guys. I don't know if it's connected to like, if she's depressed or she has anxiety or an intense worry, but there is, she's taking pills. Um, but it looks like it's easy to abuse that when you mix the pills with alcohol, it can really dramatically impact the effects. So um, I'm feeling that there's some She's saying I, I had a tumultuous life, like there were a lot of ups and a lot of downs. She said a lot of swings. And um, she says, as a mother, we want what's best for our children and for our family. But 
you can only do so much. She says, your hands are tied. She says, she's making me feel like as a mother, her hands are tied and you can only do so much. And it's very, she says, it's a very painful thing to watch your children hurt, hurting and, and not being successful and, and uh, spiraling out of control is what she says. She's really emotional also and she's kind of, she's upset. She's saying, and spiraling out of control. And there's, there's, there's no, you cannot rationalize this. this. This child that is doing these awful things and acting and behave, behaving in such a way that you can't, it doesn't even resemble the beautiful, sweet child that you had. And you know that there's this, this corruption, this, this incredible something that has taken them over, that has corrupted them so much that you no longer, they no longer belong to you as your child. They, they belong to this evil that they are not the person that you know. You can't look at that person and look into their eyes and see the child that you had. They're lost. And so I know, I do know, Farah, that you, that you had a son that had some trouble with the law and things. And um, so I know, I do know that. I know that. And that as a mother, I can only imagine how difficult that would be on you and how heavy that would weigh on your heart. So I want to acknowledge that. So, so I know intellectually that you have a son that has had some problems, but I, I'm not sure how bad necessarily that they are, but, or were at that time, that would have been long before 2009. And she's saying something about 2010. And then she's showing me a boat or a yacht and that there's some, there's some um, judgment or people who are very critical of Ryan O'Neill. She's saying of Ryan and his decisions or his choices. And people have to understand, they've got to understand that grief is a very private thing. And we grieved together. We grieved. We knew that I was dying. We knew that the outcome would be death. It would not, things would not get better. They would get worse. And we discussed how, I, I mean, I wanted him, I, if the situation was reversed, we would feel the same way, no matter which one of us was in the situation that was going to have to, somebody was gonna to have to carry on, was going to have to continue to live life. It doesn't help anyone to have someone be alive, but be so grief ridden that they can't even function. And Ryan and I grieved a lot together and he was criticized for some of his, Oh. his choices or behaviors perhaps but you know it's so easy for for people on the outside to to judge and there's really no place for that there really isn't any place for that I, she's feeling very defensive of her family of her of her family and of their behaviors is how she feels she feels very defensive of her family like she needs to defend them so Farrah, can I feel into you as a, cause I feel I connect to you instantly as a mother because that's how I can relate to you. So when I channel spirit in the afterlife, I connect however I can relate to you. And whether it's through, like if it's a musician through their music and, and for you, I connect to you through mother being a mom. So that's why you present with your family so strongly. I, I think that's how what I think. So let's connect from a spirit spirit standpoint and a human standpoint. Let's bring in the energy of your spirit. Oh, lots of beautiful energy. Yes. She's showing me an angel or angel wings. So I don't know if actually her gravestone, her grave marker, if there's a statue of an angel near it, or if there is actually an etching of an angel. It looks like wings. And I think it's like the side profile of an angel is what I see. I think I see that. It's, it's not just a straight angel. It's like sideways and there's this like angel thing. And I feel that, but she's also making me feel like she had a, I don't know if she had a baby who died or a miscarriage or something like that, but I feel like there's a, a loss of a child. I feel that. And I want to acknowledge that because she, she's helping me to feel that, that she's with a child in the afterlife. That's what I'm feeling.
and there's a tense and a stressfulness or a tenseness about her. When I feel into her as a body, when I feel her as a spirit, I see this beautiful, peaceful, angelic energy. It's very yellow, which is Archangel Azrael or Archangel Gabriel, messenger angels, connection between earth and heaven. Very, I want, for those of you who are, are her fans, I want you to understand that there is a peaceful energy around her as a spirit. So I want you to understand that. So she, there, she's not at, um, she's not upset in the afterlife. She's not, she's not um, stressed in the afterlife. I'm just describing to you how the energy feels and the difference between her as a spirit and now her reflecting upon her human life because I think it's important for you as a fan, as a viewer to understand the difference. So she's making me feel like it's different than I thought it would be, she says. Uh, heaven, what you consider heaven or the afterlife, it, it, it's different. It's a lot less uh, rigorous or um, like, it's almost like she's making me feel like athletic, like less exercise, less movement, less less effort, less effort um, to be a spirit. It, it takes much less to to just feel good, to be in your fullness. It, it's different than I expected, she says. But she says, you have to remember that I had cancer and cancer is, it, it takes such a toll on the body. So that process itself is, is very difficult. And for those who have to watch loved ones go through cancer, she says, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. I would rather, she says, I would rather experience it myself than to have to watch someone I love suffer with it. That is a powerful statement. She says, yes, it is. And she's making me feel like her mother is there. I think her mother's in the afterlife is how it feels to me. Um, or her mother is there with her is what she's making me feel like my mother is here with me. Um, she briefly mentions her dad, but I don't think he's in the afterlife. I can't tell for sure where he is, but she briefly mentions a dad and then there's a separation and then there's a mother, but the mother is with me. The mother is with me. Um, she's making me feel like she had to grow up fast and that she developed or looked much older than she was. And I feel like she modeled is what I feel like. She may have been a model first because I see her like advertisement pictures of her. And I'm not sure if she was in Playboy or not, but she's showing me Hugh Hefner. <laughs> I don't know if maybe they were friends. I don't know. Um, and again, she goes back to Ryan gets a lot of blame and a lot of there's a lot of anger that's directed or projected toward Ryan and she says that's that's ill-informed that's not blaming someone else for things is simply how some people deal with grief they redirect their true emotions or their feelings and they deal with their grief in that way and so Ryan has has had to bear a heavy burden and a heavy weight and I don't I don't blame him for anything, for, for any of it, for anything that has gone down. I don't blame him for anything. So I'm not sure what's gone on, but it feels like there's a lot of questions and there feels like there's money issues and concern about money and whose money is it kind of a thing and moving the money, something about moving the money, I see that. And then I see, um, Safira, I also see but then she's showing me a ring, a birthstone ring. She points to my ring, but then she says birthstone. So my ring is just, it's just a, like crystals. I mean, it's nothing fabulous. It's a, nothing, it's not like a topaz, but it, that's the color of it. It's like a topaz or aquamarine kind of color. And I know that aquamarine is March, but I don't know what topaz is. So she's pointing, either she's being exacting and saying, uh, literally, this is my birthstone, or she's showing me a ring that's her birthstone. And she's showing me a ring that's special to her and that has, there's some special ring, but it's not a wedding ring, you guys. It's different. Or if it is used as a wedding ring, it looks different than that. Again, I'm gonna go back to, I think her and Ryan were married and then not married and then married and not married, or they were together and not together and together and not together. But she's making me feel like he was my best friend is what she's saying. And we understood each other, she says. And I feel like he's drinking. Somebody's drinking. I think they both are. I feel like he's drinking. Um, But they could have very volatile fights, is what she's saying. She could, they could get very vocal. And I feel like somebody cheated. I think maybe he did. But she was on a movie set. She, I wonder if they met on a movie set. 
because I see her on a movie set and I see him, but then I see cheating. I don't know if they met because they cheated on somebody else and then they got together, you know, or if he cheated on her or what that was about. I also see Lee Majors and I don't really, off the top of my head, I, I, I know what the name, Lee Majors, is that like the, is that the guy that was like the bionic man or the six million dollar man or something? Lee Majors, I see that. So I don't know what the connection is to that. If you know what connection is between Lee Majors and Farrah Fawcett, write it below, or between Lee Majors and Ryan O'Neill, write it below. All right. Um, and I see something about the estate in her bedroom. Um, one of their homes, it looks like it's in California, and I wanna say it's Los Angeles or a specific part of LA. Um, I don't know if it's Beverly Hills, it doesn't feel right. Um, okay, so I've been to California, but I haven't been for a very long time. It's been at least six years. So I'm trying to remember. It feels like, you know, there's a hillside and then there's different levels of different um, places, kind of groupings of neighborhoods. I don't feel like it's the hills, Beverly Hills. I think it's someplace else. Um, Sher Sherwin, Sherman Oaks, Sherwin, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly where she's at, but I see that there's a house and then there's another house like maybe Malibu or someplace different. So there's two, there's at least two residences and one's near LA, but it's kind of on a hill. And there's another one that's down lower. Like, I don't know if it's in the valley or if it's actually a way like, like a Malibu or something like that. Um, but there's a, a beautiful, like her bedroom in one of these houses is beautiful and it's very feminine and airy and light and the colors are neutral and very um, beachy. Beachy is how I describe it, like beiges, tans, taupes, and then like peach, like a light peach color with some like ivory and very, just very calming and comfortable is what I'm seeing. And I look out and all I can see in the windows, there's a huge bank of windows and all I can see is I can see some of the palm trees kind of moving like rustling and I know that it's near the beach. I know that I'm near the ocean enough where I could almost hear it if the window was open and yet I'm not right on the beach. It's very clear she's not right on the beach, but she's off and she's up a little ways and she can hear it and you can almost smell, the air smells different. If you could, oh, just please open the window, just please open the window just a little bit. And it's really bright and that's a contrast to whatever's in this room. I wonder if I'm seeing the room that she died in, I'm wondering. No, I feel like she was in the hospital. Well, she was in and out of the hospital. And then when the treatments made her too weak, she stopped. She said, no, I'm done. I'm done. We're done though. And I feel like she entered hospice, but I also see her going to the hospital. So I don't know if when she died, she went to the hospital or if there was like a change of heart and somebody wanted to get her to the hospital and see if they could help her feel better, make her more comfortable. I'm not sure. I'm confused about the end of life circumstance. Um, but why would you show me how beautiful your room is, your bedroom is, unless it's a very peaceful place. And then when I'm seeing this stuff very specifically, it's making me think, it's making my mind think or wonder, is this where she died or is this the place where she died? But then there's confusion about this. Like, no, I see her going to the hospital though. So I'm uh, not sure if there's a consciousness or not a, a non-conscious. She feels like she's making me feel like I'm unconscious, like I slip away. But there's a tremendous amount of pain. The body is very achy. There's a lot of aches. And it almost, she says, the body almost feels like concrete. It starts to become like it's setting. That concrete, it's soft at first, right? When they, they first lay it down and then it starts to get hard and it gets really stiff like that. She says, I can feel that in my body. That's quite specific. Is there anything that you would like to share with us about, about your life, about how you'd like to be remembered? She says, for, for my work, and she says, philanthropy, for the charitable, for the charitable efforts that I participated in. Like she's saying, um, for the charity, for the charity. I almost feel like there's animals, like animal cruelty stuff. I feel like there's that. I wonder if she's vegan. She really feels animal specific. So there must be some activism there in that regard, but I feel like she's charitable. So she's showing up for charity events and she's giving money and that kind of thing. She wants to be remembered for, for what she could contribute and what she was able to give is what she's saying. Mm -hmm. 
And she says, we only have control over so much. And that's the message that it feels important that she would share is that you only have control over so much. She says like, look, Michael, who would have thought Michael and I would leave on the same day? We would go on the same day. And she says, but it's, it's, it's kind of nice because then my family could be left alone to grieve, to mourn, to move through their process without the lights and the cameras and the paparazzi and so many people in the, their business. It was much more quiet. So did you plan it? Like, did you know? And she says, well, timing wise, we, I, I did have a choice about when and I quite simply didn't want to, and she says, wreck, wreck the weekend. She's showing me Saturday and, and Sunday. And she says, to wreck the weekend, I, I didn't want to, to wreck the weekend. There was something about the weekend and messing up something on the weekend. And so she didn't want to do that. And then to wait till Tuesday seemed too long. It seemed cruel to put, put my family and my friends through that. It was like a death watch, you know. It seemed too cruel to do that. And I, so I see a, a yellow angel with you. So that's, so I see a yellow angel. So it's either Gabriel or Azrael. Can you tell, can you share? She says, you know, I was a very, she said, I was a spiritual person. I did believe in eating right and taking care of your body and meditation and all of these beautiful things. I, I really did believe in God and this whole uh, concept of oneness and, and love and, I wasn't afraid to die and the energy that in, that just came around me that I remember to feeling at, at that moment was just warmth, just warm. So like the most beautiful sunny day at the beach, the most gorgeous sunny day and just being wrapped in that warmth, that's what I remember. And then she's saying to me something about New York. So I don't know if like she missed New York or New York City was important to her, but she's saying New York, New York or being in New York or New York, New York City. All right. And then she's, she's saying that she wished she could have made it easier on Ryan. He was very upset. He had a very difficult time saying goodbye. And that's something that is, 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 is a human thing. And yet the love that is there is, it's such an unconditional thing. I would like people to know that. That love, the love that you have in your human, the idea of, of what love is in the, in the human life that you have, it's so, it's so much more than that. It's so much beyond that and unconditional isn't even a, an accurate way to describe what it feels like. It's just this perfect, it's like your perfect day. It's your best day and sharing it with someone that you love so very much. And I want, I wish for Ryan to find happiness and I wish for my friends, my dear, wonderful friends to know how much I love them and appreciate them and wish them so much joy and, and how I'm so thankful. There's so much gratitude. You guys, she's making me feel very grateful and it's interesting. So I have this necklace on that I have that says, it was a gift for me. It says practice gratitude. And that really feels like part of the energy that she's bringing into as well as great gratitude, grateful. Like she's expressing thanks. She's saying thank you, thank you a lot to people, her friends especially. And I thank her friends for helping Ryan because I feel like they were a support for him just as they would have been for her if the situation was different. And they were trying, although some of them had strong opinions <laughs> or weren't quite sure about things with Ryan necessarily. They may, may maybe in the past have not been that approving, but after, she says, after I died, they really carried out my wishes and, and I appreciate that. And she's making me feel like she was scattered a bit, but I know that she was buried because I remember in one of the grave tours in one of the famous Hollywood cemeteries seeing her gravestone, like one of the um, online, uh, one of the vloggers that does old Hollywood stuff that does the, 
the grave tours or whatever. I don't know, grave tours, that sounds weird, but the movie star graves, you know. I remember seeing her a long time ago, seeing her her stone, but I don't know what it says or what it looks like, but I remember seeing that she was buried. I know she was buried. But I feel like there's like a scatter or a going to the beach with her. So there may have been a two part kind of a thing there. And I see a boat, I see that too. So, all right, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to honor your memory and to celebrate your life. And thank you for being willing to share in the context of human life, because you have. So I appreciate that very much. And I'm sure the viewers will as well. So here at Above Life Channel, you have been watching a channeling with Farrah Fawcett in the afterlife. I'm Bridget. And the goal here is to inspire your spirit to fill you with hope because this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Thank you so much for watching.